Hey girls, it's TJ again. Welcome back to our third week of Girls Club Online. Super excited that you joined us. Hey, last week was Easter. Did anybody hunt for eggs or color eggs or do something fun? I know that we we're all kind of doing a stay inside thing, but what did you do? Send me some posts and let me know. Uh, my kids colored some eggs and did some painting and we had some cracked eggs, so it was a little interesting. Um, I don't know if you got some, but but up here in the Ohio Michigan area, we got snow yesterday. Can you believe it? It's crazy we got snow. Um, I'm from the south. We don't get snow. We don't get snow, period. If we did get snow, it certainly wouldn't be in April. But I hope that you got outside, maybe you enjoyed a little bit of the snow, because I hopefully this is the last for me anyway for this year. Um, guess what else? You got fun packs coming, and in your fun packs, you got some more creative ideas. I love hearing some of your stories and some of the feedback I'm getting on some of the cards that you're making. I would love to be able to see some of your pictures. So if you could, send us some pictures. Let us see what you're making, what you're doing, um, so that we can either post them online if you don't, if you don't mind, um, but at least be able to share in what you're doing there at home. Um, also remember that with your activity packs that you've been getting, you can also use these to earn badges. So I know it's kind of crazy, but at home you can still earn your badges for Girls Club. So the last week we, the last two weeks we've been working on the arts activity pages and we did some, a little bit of crafts and I sent you some stuff to make some crafts. So what, if you want, if you want your badge, then let us know what you've been doing. Let us know about your activity pack. Did you finish? Did you get your memory verse memorized? And then did you get your little project done? Um, we can write it down. And then when we have our big celebration later, um, hopefully sooner than later, we'll be able to get you your badges, okay? Coming up this next couple of weeks, we're gonna be doing prayer. Let's talk and sending this out to you. You're getting some fun activities to do. You have two crafts that you'll be doing with this. And you're also gonna be memorizing, hopefully you'll get it memorized, the Lord's Prayer. So you, if you're not familiar with that, we'll be memorizing and working on the Lord's Prayer, okay? Um, so we have the new fun activity packs and stuff. Uh, we're talking about prayer and then, um, hey, guess what time it is? It's our Bible first time. So I tell you what, set this on pause again, like we've done the last two weeks, set it on pause, get your Bibles and come back. Hey, but before you go, you need two more things other than your Bibles. I need you to go see if you can find, I know this is hard to find right now, either a toilet paper roll or a paper towel. So here's a toilet paper roll, empty one or paper towel roll. See if you can find one really quick. Um, and then see if you can find a phone. I don't know, borrow your mom or dad's phone, something just to use as a phone. Um, I actually have an old phone around here. So I'm gonna run and I'll come right back. Okay, see you in a minute. Hey girls, did you get your Bibles? Do you remember last week's first? We've been working on it last few weeks. Let's see if you can remember it. It's actually found in Psalms 9017. See if you can remember it. In fact, let's see if we can do the hand motions together. I'll see if I can get them high enough so you can see. It says, may the favor of the Lord our God rest upon us and establish, remember we did this, establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. That was Psalms 90, 17. But this week's lesson, this week's verse is gonna be found in Philippians 4, 6, and 7. In fact, it says, and if you look in your Bible in Philippians 4, 6, and 7, it will say, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. What does that mean exactly? Don't be anxious. Well, if you looked it up, anxious means to be greatly worried. So don't be worried about anything, but in everything, that means in everything, by prayer and petition. My mom used to say, give prayer and thanks to God. And so petition, you're going to give requests to God, and then you're going to give thanks to God, and you present your request to God. And then the peace of God, which is so important, the peace of God, which transcends, means to go above and beyond anything you could ever imagine. All your understanding will guard. What does guard mean? Well, to keep safe. So if I'm going to keep something, but the peace of God will keep safe my heart and mind in Christ Jesus. So I want you to work on that this week. Okay, Philippians 4, 6, and 7, work on it this week. Now, I want to get to our lesson real quick, and it's going to be a real quick lesson. Did you get your toilet paper roll or your paper towel roll? I actually found my old phone. Well, actually, it was my mom's old phone. It was kind of cool. So it was lying around. Josie's been playing with it. So I want you to do that. And then one more thing I forgot to tell you. Um, I need you to see if you can go find me a book. I need you two books, actually. If you can find me one with no pictures and one with pictures. 
bring it back. And we're going to talk about it and we'll use it in our lesson today. Okay, be right back. Hey, what? You did what? Oh my goodness, that's so funny. I can't believe that you, oh, oh, hey, wait, I gotta go, I'm back. Okay, sorry, I'll talk to you later, all right, bye. Oh, sorry, excuse me, that was my girlfriend on the phone. We love to talk all the time. We have so much fun. In fact, I probably talk to her too much. We just love to talk. We have a lot of good things to share. Sometimes I talk, sometimes she talks and I listen. So, hey, speaking of talking and communicating with things, you guys ever play different games where you have talking games? My daughter likes to play a game with like a pretend phone. That's why I told you to go get a phone. This is my mom's old phone actually. And I used to have one kind of like it. So I don't know if you remember, like have you ever remember seeing anything like that? And they have like this little keyboard on them. She likes to pretend and go around and she's like, she's talking or she'll get on there and she's like, hey mom, hey mom, you talk. We like to play that game. Or sometimes in my classrooms when I've done with schools, we've actually passed the, Tube around. Have you ever played the pass it on game? Right now probably isn't the greatest time to do that with your neighbors, but maybe with your family members you could do it. You actually get on there and you, you think of a phrase or something kind of fun that you don't think they'll get right. And you try to talk to them like this and see if that you can hear they can hear you and understand you. Or even do it in a smaller tube that makes it a little easier. You can talk like this. Just a really cool, fun way. What are some other ways we can communicate or we can understand things? You know what? I asked you to go get me a book. So my daughter likes to read one of her favorite books is Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus. In fact, it is probably one of my family's favorite books to read. And you can see a lot of pictures. And inside there, you see that the pigeon is communicating not just with his words, but with his feelings. So he's talking, hey, don't let the pigeon drive the bus. And then he goes through this whole long story. If you've never read it, get somebody to read it to you. Even at 11 and 12 years old, However old you are, it's a fun book to read. It's actually funny. Or maybe one of my other favorite books is The Velveteen Rabbit. I like to read through that and look through the pages. It's got a great book to read. But then some books don't have pictures. And I just read, and I just like to read it for the words that are inside. This book is Mary Poppins. It's one of my favorite books. I love this story. You've probably seen the movie. You've not read the stories. They're really, really great. There's no pictures inside, but where do I get the pictures from? In my head. Why are you telling me about this book, Miss TJ? Because it's another way that we can listen or we can hear something from somebody. Because the author of this book, P.L. Travers, actually communicated with us. Why are we talking about this? I thought we were talking about prayer, Miss TJ. Well, I am. Because see, prayer, it's just the way that we communicate with God, and then he communicates back to us. See, so, you know, I was talking about my girlfriends, and we love to talk, and, and we just share all kinds of stories. And when we were in college, we actually would go out to, like, this um, football, so well, it was actually a soccer field at the time. And we would go out late before our curfew, because we had a curfew back then. We'd go out, and we'd lay out in the soccer field, and we'd all laugh, and we'd look at the stars, and we'd be silly. And sometimes we would, like, pass gas, but we wouldn't tell anybody, so shh. And we would all giggle and be stupid and silly together because that was fun. We had a great time. And sometimes I would talk and sometimes I didn't talk and I just listened because that's what it's like. We, when you're in a relationship with other people, they talk and you talk and they listen and you listen and you share back and forth. See, God likes to do the same thing with us. He likes to hear from us. It's what we call prayer. And he likes us to hear from him. And when my kids were little, that I taught them to start listening to God. God does. He wants to speak to you. In fact, he does speak to, a, to us. Um, 1 Samuel 3, 2, there's a story of about a, a boy whose name was Samuel. And he is asleep one night. And then God comes to him and says, Samuel, Samuel, and calls him. And he's like, what? And he thought that it was like the prophet, Eli. And prophet meaning like a pretend that he was at his, you know, a house where his pastor was. And so he goes to his, the prophet and he's like, Hey, did you call me? And Eli's like, no, I didn't call you. And then he goes back to bed. He's like, Samuel, Samuel, you know, it's like, what? And he goes back and he's like, did you call me? And Eli's like, no, it must be God calling you. So he goes back to bed. And instead, whenever God calls him again, he says, Samuel, Samuel, he stops and he listens and he says, here I am, Lord. And so God speaks to him. So God can audibly with 
speak to us so that we can hear in our ears. But another way that God can speak to us is in our hearts. In Romans 8, 16, it says that we can hear God deep in our hearts. So like when we get a strong feeling or an impression on something, it it's like you can hear the Lord speaking into your heart. Remember that when you hear that, it needs to make sure that it lines up with the word of God. So you need to get out your Bible and make sure that it lines up with the word of God. And it's not just you talking to yourself in the middle of the night and telling yourself stuff, okay? But we can practice listening to God. Whenever my son Caleb was three, I remember sitting him down and saying, okay, we're going to practice listening. And we would pray and he would say all kinds of prayers. And, and he was so funny when he would pray. But one of the things that I told him, I was like, I want you to stop and listen. And my son Caleb is very literal. I mean, like he, he thinks that anything that you say, it's going to be like that way. So we would stop and pray. And my son Joshua was five and I, we'd stop and I'd say, okay, I want you to just think, what would God be saying to you right now? And Joshua would tell me, God loves me. And he would say, oh, God tells me he, he loves Joshua or God's going to, you know, whatever. Caleb would stop and say, I don't hear God. And I go, okay, Caleb, but I know you didn't hear God. I just want you to practice. We're practicing listening to God. So we prayed and we need to listen for God to speak to us. And so we'd stop and say, well, just pretend. And what was God speaking to you? And so he would sit there and he would say, mama, God's not saying nothing. <laughs> It takes some time. You have to practice and so you can hear the Lord speak to you. One of the games I used to play with them was to say, hey, you know what? We're going to, we prayed. Now I want you to think if, if God was talking to you and ask God, God, if there is a board game or a game that you could play with me right now, what game would you play with me? And I said, and then I want you to hear the first game in your head and think, why would God want to play that with you? I don't know. Maybe it would be Scrabble. Maybe there's something he wants to tell you through Scrabble. I'm not saying go do that. I'm saying... Ask the Lord to start speaking to you so you can hear him in your heart. Some other ways that God speaks to us is through others. So he could speak to you through your friend or, a, a, you know, a Christian family member. Do you know that even God speaks through donkeys? Yeah, through a donkey. Now, I don't know about your donkeys or if you've seen donkeys anywhere around. And I haven't seen them speaking lately. But the Bible says that God actually used a donkey one time to talk to this guy and tell him not to do something. Is that crazy? God can even use a donkey to speak to us. How else can God speak to us? Well, he can speak to us through other Christians. And he can also speak to us through his word, which is probably the best way I have ever heard from God is when I read his word. In fact, when I read in my Bible in my quiet times, usually in the morning times, I'll open up the Bible and say, God, speak to me through your word. What is it that you want to tell me? That God speaks through his word. And I've opened up and there's times that he's spoken and he's given me a word for the day or he's given me a scripture verse that was that was dealing with something. He gives me a scripture verse for that. So God can also speak to us through his word. I want to just tell you um, a real quick story. One time, um, that's another way God speaks to us. One time I had um, had a dream and I knew that my dream was so important and I had the dream again. And so I remember praying and I told the Lord, I said, I, I need you to tell me what does this mean? What does this mean? And it was so crazy because I didn't know. I didn't know. I felt for sure God was speaking to me. And I actually prayed and I said, God, if you can't tell me what, if you're not going to tell me what this means, not that he can't, but if you're not going to tell me, then send me somebody. And within a three days time, I had a lady come and she's like, I don't know why. I don't even know you. And I was like, I don't know why, but I think I'm supposed to talk to you. And she came back to me and she helped me interpret a dream. And she, now, mind you, I will tell you, she told me later, she said, hey, look, if this, you don't line up with you, this doesn't line up with you and in your heart. And if things aren't, you know, whatever, you don't get a good feeling about this, then don't take it. But she said, I'm just going to tell you what I hear the Lord tell me. And she did, and it was completely from God because it was exactly what I knew the Lord had been speaking to me. So how else can God speak to us? God can speak to us through dreams. In fact, if you read in the book of Daniel in the Bible, God spoke to him through dreams. It's just crazy the things that God would do. So God can speak to us, directly to us. God can speak to us in our hearts and we get impressions and feelings. God can speak to us in our hearts and our minds. God can speak to us through others and God can speak to us in his word. And he can also speak to us through dreams. So there's a lot of different ways God can speak to us. But the question is, are you listening? So he's wanting to speak. He has a lot to say and he loves us. He's the greatest. He is the creator of everything. He created me. He created everything and he wants to talk to me. He wants to talk to you. How cool is that? That you can hear from God, the creator of the universe. That is so cool. Like he knows everything. And he wants to talk to you. So I tell you what, 
Let's practice that right now. In fact, it's kind of like you have your own hotline up to God. I mean, we're not dialing on a phone anywhere, but I want to practice that. Let's pray and talk to God. And then later, whether tonight or, or I encourage you tonight or today later, I want you to stop somewhere and say, God, Miss TJ says that you want to talk to me. Your word says you want to talk to me. So talk to me and speak to my heart. And then talk, ask God questions, you know, what and why. Now, you might not always get your answers that you want, and you might not always hear directly everything that you think you should hear. But just know that God wants to talk to you. So let's practice real quick and let's pray together. Father, I thank you for time together. I thank you for these girls that are listening. I thank you for our, te- our activities we get to do, do together. I thank you for our lives that are being changed. I thank you for the fun things we get to do. And God, I can't wait to see them back here again. Father, I just pray, Lord, this week and this next week or two, as we study prayer and we study your word, God, you would speak into their hearts. God, you speak directly to these girls. You give them amazing things. Your word says that you would give dreams and visions. So Father, I pray for dreams and visions for these girls, and they have an incredible, incredible testimony to report back. Oh my goodness, Miss TJ, Miss Judy, you're not going to believe what God spoke to me. You're not going to believe the things God did in my life. Father, I pray that you make prayer and an important practice of their everyday life, that they understand that they need to talk to you, but they also need to listen. And I thank you, Father, for these girls. I pray for protection over every single one of them. I pray, Lord, you guard their hearts, their minds, and their eyes. And I pray, Father, that if any of them don't know you, God, they will seek you so that they will know the creator, the ultimate creator of the universe. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, Stay right with us. We'll be right back. And I'm going to tell you something else fun that we got going on this next week. Okay? All right. Bye. Hey, girls. Wrap it all up. Just want to remind you, you should have gotten in the mail or be getting in the mail your new activity sheet for prayer. Let's talk. Um, we only actually got through material to cover through just for today. So we're not going to actually even get to the others. If you want to go ahead and fill them out, great. Just bring them back next week when we ever we go over all of our materials to make sure that we have all our answers correct, okay? So we're gonna go over just the first page today. Then also, I'm sending you in the mail some ribbon. And you're gonna be using this ribbon to make just a little, um, looks like you can use it as a wall hanging, you can use it as a bookmark or whatever. Um, and then I'm gonna actually give you some little wooden hearts or sometimes you may even get the little stars. So you get these little wooden hearts or stars and then you are going to write on the front of it, your date. Um, this is to help, just to kind of remember this time period and that you were at home, we sent you this. And then also, if you would like, you can write, turn it into like a little prayer ribbon, people that you're praying for or things that you're praying for. Um, you could put your name, um, you could put, um, maybe you pray for yourself, that's a good thing. Maybe you're praying for one of your parents or maybe you're praying for a sibling or something else. Um, and I'll send you three or four, maybe five hearts. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your ribbon, you're gonna take your ribbon and then you're gonna actually glue it you're gonna actually, after you finish writing it, you can color it, decorate it, whatever. Um, you may even have some stuff left over from the cards and you're gonna just glue it on the ribbon. And then whenever you finish, you can use your ribbon as either a bookmark um, for something or you can actually just put it on your wall and if you have some sticky tape left. Um, I'm looking around to see if I got some extra sticky stuff that you can use also. Um, and hopefully if you have your parents' permission that you can stick that up on the wall. And then one other thing I wanna tell you about real quick. Um, we've been doing our girls club um, for ages, five-ish, six-ish, all the way up to about 12, 13. We also have um, another club that we have is called, we were going to start this month, was called the Friends Club. And it was actually for girls um, about the ages of 13, between sixth and seventh grade, all the way up until their high school years. Um, We discuss things that deal with high school, middle school girls and high school girls um, in that we haven't been able to start that. But if you know someone or if you're interested or know someone who might be interested, I know we have some other girls around the area who were interested. Um, you know someone in that area, that um, age frame, if you would contact the church or contact us and let us know, we're also opening up the Friends in its Girls Club, but it's another, it's the older version of Girls Club and they're doing Friends. Now, with that said, you saw my t-shirt. I actually found some really cool t-shirts back in the back back there. And so what I'm gonna do is actually, so just stay with me, the first person who sends me a either a 
a picture or something just saying what you've been doing or any of the crafts that we've been working on. And they need to be something we've done. Um, a picture uh, showing us what you've done and then let us know you've memorized your Bible verse. I'm going to next week put this shirt in your package. Now, this is a smaller version of the shirt, but I'm also gonna give you a bigger version of the shirt, okay? So this is for next week, and you may hear my daughter in the background, just ignore her. Um, I'll be sending you out a shirt. So let us know, contact us. I hope you girls have a great week, and I'll see you next week. All right, bye-bye.